Thanks everyone for joining the meeting. We're going to get started in just a minute. I hope you can enjoy these uh, images from our community forum while you're waiting. Good morning, everyone. Thank you all for joining us today for this special Ontario Trium Foundation grant recognition event. We particularly want to welcome our MPP, Dolly Begum, I think we have everybody here and anybody else who can join later will, uh, will join us. And as you can see, this is our agenda. So first I would like to do a land acknowledgement. I would like to start by honoring the land that we are shown are known traditionally as Caronto, which means the place in the water where the trees stand. Caronto is the traditional territories of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabe, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples, and continues to be home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit and Métis peoples from across Turtle Island. Ontario is covered by 46 treaties, with Tarkaranto being covered by Treaty 13, signed with the Mississaugas of the Credit and the Williams Treaty, signed with multiple Mississaugas and Chippewa bands. We acknowledge the Dish with One Spoon Treaty, an agreement to peacefully share and care for the Great Lake regions. We would also like to honor the spirits of the 215 Indigenous children found buried at a former residential school in Kamloops, BC. Through this, we are reminded of the devastating impact of colonial violence on Indigenous communities. We are mindful of broken covenants and we strive to make this right with the land and each other through concrete actions of reconciliation. I would also like to take a moment to do an African ancestral acknowledgement. I acknowledge that we are all treaty people. Many of us have come here as settlers, immigrants, or newcomers in this generation or generations past. I would also like to acknowledge those of us who came here forcefully, particularly as a result of slavery and the transatlantic slave trade. Therefore, I honor, pay tribute, and invite into the space the ancestors of African origin and descent. Lastly, we also expressed our sadness towards increasing incidents of Islamophobia and other racialized events that have been happening in our community in the recent past. Thank you. As I mentioned just a few minutes ago, our member of parliament is provincial parliament is Dolly Bagan. Since 2018, Dolly Bagan, a member of the New Democratic Party, has represented Scarborough Southwest as its MPP. Our legal clinic is located at Kennedy and Eglinton, and that is in the Scarborough Southwest electoral district. When elected, MPP Bagan was the first Bangladeshi Canadian to be elected to a legislative body in Canada. And as a member of the official opposition, she has held a number of important opposition critic portfolios. Her most recent is citizenship, foreign credentials, and immigration services. 
MPP Begin has kindly attended several of the social assistance forums organized by our legal clinic as a guest panelist. And most recently last summer, she was the first to tell us the good news that our legal clinic was offered an Ontario, Ontario Trillium Foundation grant. Please welcome Dolly Begin, our member of parliament. Thank you so much. Uh, good morning, everyone. Thank you, Christy. Uh, it's such a wonderful feeling um, joining you anytime, actually. Uh, I know your uh, legal services, your legal clinic does wonderful work for our community. And uh, as a community member, as a resident of Scarborough Southwest, uh, you know, who has grown up uh, in Scarborough, I see the, the, the vulnerabilities in our community and I see the way you have impacted and how you have supported so many people who are who are really in need. Uh, so I, it's it's such an honor for me to be a part of this. Um, anytime, uh, my support is with you 100% um, always. And I just want to say how grateful I am to um, actually I, my, my team as well because uh, Christina, Zach, they always remind me how many times they rely on your services, um, how many times they call on you. Um, and particularly on uh, on this grant, I'd like to say, I think over the last couple of years, especially post pandemic, we are seeing the need um, to engage, to support uh, specific communities that was targeted by this grant um, than ever before. And I am really proud of the way uh, the West Scarborough Community um, Legal Services has really you know, engaged and, and done that work and, and continues to do that work. Uh, because it is, um, and I, I just want to focus on one specific group, in, and I think your land acknowledgements um, were beautiful. It really goes to show how um, how grounded I think all of you are to this community, truly. Uh, so, and, and a spe uh, specifically when we're talking about mental health, um, I think this is the, for probably the first time where, like in my office, we have seen I, I don't even know the, an overwhelming amount of cases. And it's, it's been so difficult um, just, to, um, just to provide you know, the, the needs or even direction for, for some, of, some of the people. Um, having parents come forward for their you know, young children, dealing with mental health, a lot of, lot of people from diverse backgrounds. So it's, it is enormous and I, I'm really grateful to have um, people like yourselves who understand the need, who want to engage and who are so caring in, in the way that they go forward. And I hope that you continue to get the support, continue to get grants like this to do the work that you need to do. So thank you very much. And I wish you all all the very best. Thank you, Dolly. I totally agree with you. Uh, we Our clients are coming in with complex needs and mental health is tangent to whatever their other problems are. We had two consultants work with us on this grant. I would like to introduce Mary is an Indigenous consultant who has facilitated an Indigenous culture and history sessions for a private company. She is also a public motivational speaker who strives to cultivate dialogue between other Indigenous service providers through sharing her own story of lived experience of dealing with systemic impacts and colonialist structures. For our OTF grant, Mary interviewed members of the indigenous community and assisted to write some of our OTF final report. Our other consultant is Jessica, who is president of JK and G Consulting and over the past few years has led several community-based research projects. Jessica is our lead consultant interviewed members of the black community for our OTF grant and she drafted and revised many times our OTF final report until it was polished. So, um, Mary, would you like to speak now? Yes, yeah, I will speak. Uh, it's such a pleasure to be here with you all today. Um, honestly, this project was amazing to be able to be a part of such an amazing community with West Scarborough Legal Services. Um, and also Jessica, partnering with Jessica on this project was absolutely wonderful. Um, I would say um, what really stood out was during the interview process was being able to actually connect with 
the indigenous folks here in Scarborough and actually hearing their raw stories and what they're going through. And with my lived experience, I was able to kind of, you know, really understand and sympathize a lot of what they're going through. But what really stood out highly was mental health and obviously lack of housing was a huge thing for um, Indigenous folks, not enough um, affordable housing for sure. And also the fact that a lot of um, Indigenous people, they didn't really know about West Scarborough Legal Services, only um, Aboriginal Legal Services downtown Toronto. So it would um, I think in the future, if there was more funding available to, to kind of implement, um, I think, um, you know, having like an Indigenous presence on, on staff, I think with um, West Garbo Legal, I think would be really beneficial. That would be one of like my recommendations because I felt like we all learned a lot and gained a lot of knowledge mm -hmm. through this project. So I think that that would be beneficial just to go forward in a good way to serve um, the Indigenous folks that do live here in Scarborough and not uh, downtown. But I thought it was um, a success with the project. So it was really good, really good being able to just hear from everyone and just be, you know, candid. So I think everything went really well. Um, and I, yeah, I love the group. It was absolutely amazing. So it was a great experience for me professionally. Thank you, Barry. And Jessica? Yeah, happy to. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Jessica. Um, and it's nice to see you, MVP Dolly. Um, I don't know if you remember, I was a part of your, um, yeah, the youth, youth cabinet in 2020. So it's nice to see a familiar face here. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the outcomes of the research findings. So, I mean, overall, and quite frankly, uh, like, unfortunately, unsurprisingly, uh, we found that a lot of the barriers experienced by Black, Indigenous, racialized, and or individuals living with mental health or substance use were systemic. Um, and that their ongoing experiences of colonialism and racism actually continue to limit these communities' experiences with their abilities to access safe and supportive legal assistance. So, um, currently, our legal system is, isn't is really prepared to support vulnerable, vulnerable populations and their complex case needs. And many of the individuals to whom this research, research actually engaged found that they had complex legal needs. So um, their needs were just singular and they could not truly be disentwined from social support needs. So what we ended up evidencing was that the legal support system and social support systems uh, continue to operate independently of one another, but truly they needed to become more connected to provide a more holistic, trauma-informed, transformational, and bottom line, effective support net for individuals who were seeking assistance. Um, when we were examining the challenges and barriers of individuals, the report starts with the the first the first barrier which is the underlying crisis affecting individuals which is economic hardships and over the last four years those things have only wor worsened for individuals living in the scarborough area and without economic access to secure employment savings um or social support systems people are truly finding themselves in precarious situations which end up making them more vulnerable to even needing legal services in the first place. So that's sort of what gets people through the door. Um, and once they do require legal services, so once they're in the clinic system, um, the complexity of their cases has truly forced um, some of our legal workers to act on, to act um, at the side of their desk really as social workers. So they're legal workers, but they're being now forced to act as social workers um, and individuals seeking legal support really reported that they needed safe and deeply affordable housing. So not just affordable housing, but deeply affordable housing, um, access to safe, safe and secure and sufficient employment and finding food. That was one of, that was something that came up time and time again um, among uh, among many other common experiences of poverty. Um, for Black research participants, who was the group that I was looking more specifically at, 
a theme um, that that we found, but was also kind of common am among racialized individuals, was the need to not only integrate social services into the legal support system, but also to, to integrate legal services and supports together. So many spoke about the fact that the legal system was very separated um, and they had multiple legal needs across different systems, um, which the, the clinic in itself could not, could not provide services for. Um, and so it meant that a lot of people, particularly Black uh, research participants, struggling to juggle multiple caseworkers and institutions instead of receiving full legal support and assistance from a single clinic. Um, I did want to speak about racialized individuals quickly. Predominantly, they spoke to needs about immigration and refugee support. Uh, noting that the clinic system was not fully supported um, or funded, quite frankly, to support the depth of services that these clients needed. Um, and many were unaware of, like Mary had mentioned, where to go. Um, many were unaware of the legal, the legal clinic, um, or if they were aware of the legal clinic, had to also juggle multiple uh, different uh, service providers to be able to get the full depth of, of, of support. Um, and I know we started this, this conversation today talking about individuals living with mental health and substance use. And that was another big theme that of course came out because that was one of our uh, focus populations. Um, and what we thought, uh, what, what, what we found was that they needed more access to culturally aware mental health services and required more warm referrals and for service providers to operate in a more trauma-informed lens. So currently they're, their experiences um, in accessing legal services and supports um, were limited because of their need for mental health services and supports, but not only mental health services and supports, but services and supports that were trauma-informed and culturally aware, particularly for individuals who are living in Scarborough. Most people reported that they were just waiting on lists to receive support, so they weren't actually getting the type of, um, the type of uh, support that they needed. Um, lastly, what I'll mention is, um, what I thought was interesting and I wasn't actually expecting to come out of the research, but I mean, how surprised could I have really have been, um, was that among most of the women engaged, most of them were experiencing gender-based violence and that violence was inherently connected to their experiences of requiring legal, legal support. So that was a finding that was, I mean, was not surprising, but surprising um, in this work. Um, I think all in all, there were numerous barriers facing um, our communities, which made access to support definitely more difficult, whether it be poverty, language barriers, experiences of mental health and substance use, racism or gender-based violence. Um, there were lots of things that were limiting access to, to the clinic system. Um, in closing, I think that what the report is really highlighting is the need for more intertwined legal services. Um, so legal supports across um, legal needs, but then also a deeper integration between the legal system and the social services system um, to really support the marginalized and vulnerable communities that this research was looking at. Um, we can't disentwine things and people's needs are complex, um, which, um, which, which we see through through this work. So um, just a little bit about our findings um, and that's all, thank you. Thank you, Jessica, thank you, Mary. And thank you for your work on this project. I know it went a little bit longer than you expected it to go, but I also think you helped us learn a lot and that we helped you learn a lot too about the resources in, the, the resources in Scarborough and how Scarborough has not been allocated the resources that they need for their vulnerable population and that it really takes a lot of lobbying from our members of parliament both federally and provincially to ensure that services come here and also our counselors too that services are located in scarborough not just located outside of scarborough to be used by scarborough you know we are going to hear from vanessa who is the director of legal services and a lawyer at the West Scarborough Community Legal Services, and Reggie, who is our community legal worker. She was also the project director of uh, the OTF grant, and her and Vanessa worked extraordinarily hard on writing the application, jumping for joy when we got it granted, and then 
you know, the next big step and where all the work is, is implementing the grant in terms of, oh, wow, we now have to interview 40 people. How do we go about doing it? And how do we hire consultants and all of that? And without them being constantly positive and also always thinking outside the box and working around uh, problems that would always arise, this report would not have been written and this grant would not have been as successful as it is. And we thank you. So first we're going to hear, I believe, is it gonna be from Reggie or Vanessa? I leave it up to you to decide. Yeah, thank you, uh, Christy. Um, uh, it's good to see you, um, uh, Dolly uh, Begum here. And uh, this is a really a successful project. The uh, project supposed to interview around 40 people, but we heard from close to 200 people. So now we, me and Vanessa are going to quickly go over some of the uh, recommendation, highlights of some of the recommendation we heard from community uh, uh, that, you know, um, the, the participant identified uh, these recommendation to effectively serve those four communities we have uh, focused through this project. Uh, first of all is public legal education. Uh, one of the recommendation is to provide targeted accessible public legal education to community members in various languages and format and using culturally relevant contexts. And participants wanted to see clinics educate and work more proactively with the deeply diversity of community-based organization that serve marginalized community. Furthermore, participants recommended that the clinic should consider developing education and materials, especially supporting the learning needs of indigenous, indigenous individuals, as many indigenous, indigenous uh, participants engaged in this project reported being unaware of West Cabro Community Legal Services, as Mary mentioned earlier. And furthermore, um, uh, they also recommended to improve the capacity to work with the senior community by creating education and building awareness on issues affecting seniors. Seniors issues are on rise and many uh, were not able to access services and juggle with connecting we were a digital platform to access legal information and, and other services and food uh, security. Another, uh, one of the other recommendation is clinics should uh, um, consider distributing public legal education flyers and pamphlets through food boxes and food banks to reach out and support the most vulnerable community members. And people also talked about, you know, uh, further recommended to engage community leaders across West Cabro neighborhood as a educational animators responsible for distributing information and resources. Members of race race communities need to be informed, meaningfully involved, and authentically represented in decision making process which impact our clinic. And using uh, one of the projects that West Cabro worked on through Red Cross uh, project uh, that have been pointed out as a framework uh, to approach uh, and engaging the vulnerable communities. And then other recommendation is regularly consulting with the community members to determine ongoing gaps in the service delivery in order to address the uh, gap that more vulnerable clients are facing. Finally, you know, the outreach and the education and the community development work of West Cabro should be looked through equity lens and human rights lens in order to address the outstanding, uh, long outstanding, um, you know, discrimination and also uh, systemic barriers, the community that we have focused were facing. Now I would like to pass on to Vanessa to discuss further uh, recommendation. Thanks, Reggie. So I'm more focused on the sort of client service uh, side of things. And I think a big takeaway for us is really taking a no wrong door approach with our clients to uh, make sure that they're able to connect to us with whichever way works for them. And sometimes that's coming to us uh, from your office, uh, Adali. Certainly we get quite a few clients referred. Um, and so really uh, working with the community to get clients into the clinic to know to make sure they know about us. Um, and empowering clients to receive uh, services in ways that make sense for them, whether that's in person, phone, video, email, um, 
also helping them to better connect with other LEO funded legal services. We're trying to be more transparent with the clients in terms of how they can provide us with feedback um, and trying to have more community events like the forum that we held last year, which just give more opportunities for the broader community to stay engaged with the clinic. Um, we're also taking up how we can really ensure that our services are more trauma-informed and from an anti-oppressive practice. And just one example is this week, several of our staff participated in a, a workshop um, into the national inquiry on the missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls. And that was really, that was really helpful in how we could incorporate some of the calls for justice into clinic practice. And it came at a good timing as this project's finishing up. So uh, really thought provoking. Um, I think really reflecting on and what several people mentioned, a really big concern about the increasing vulnerability for clients in our area in terms of mental health barriers. Um, and so really looking at how we can better support mental health and other sort of social support needs of our clients. So looking at the wraparound supports we can provide in the clinic, but also really building stronger referral pathways to our community services. Um, one thing we have have done as a clinic is had a social work placement for several years, and we actually have Annalise, our current um, MSW student from U of T here, and she was a big, big help in helping us get this project over the, the, the finish line. Um, but we're looking at how to sort of better leverage that position as well as uh, hopefully in the future finding a social work position. We've also added in a law student placement, law student placement through TMU, which has been um, really exciting. And looking at other referral pathways, referring to the, the concerning findings about the high level of gender-based violence, looking at how we can strengthen pathways with the domestic violence sector, as well as connecting in uh, the Scarborough Addiction Services Partnership and network of agencies looking in um, at issues around substance use in the community. Um, and finally, a really critical pillar, of course, to our client-centered services is taking steps towards reconciliation and looking how we can better serve a specific Indigenous community and really looking at that through honoring principles of Indigenous justice and Indigenous hands. So looking towards, as Mary said, raising the capacity for Indigenous staff in the future in the clinic, looking to partner with Indigenous-led organizations um, and really ensuring that we're serving clients from a place of cultural humility and an awareness of our own roles in perpetuating colonial norms and systems of oppression. So, so we have a lot of work ahead of us, but um, you know, we embrace the challenge and you know, look forward to continuing on this, this journey. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Um, it was a big project for us, bigger than we thought than we had anticipated, but I think we learned a lot and uh, as with most of these kinds of projects, we're going to have a a chance just to sit down and, and recap what we did learn, not only in terms of the recommendation, but in terms of taking on such a big grant and doing it under a certain timeline and working with a variety of people in order to accomplish that. Uh, MPP Begum, do you have any final words? or are you fine? <laughs> and if you do, go for it. Just thank you very much. Uh, Jessica, it's wonderful to see you. Our provincial youth cabinet, I think had a really like brilliant group of people uh, who have gone to do amazing work and you're a great example of that. Uh, we're ho hoping to launch the PYC uh, project again this year. So we'll let uh, the legal clinic know about it so that you can promote. I actually just messaged my team saying, maybe we can help with one of their recommendations from this project, um, which is the awareness part of it. And we can see if we could host it so we can cover some of the cost um, and even just you know bring some snacks, provide a location and and see what we can do. So, so Christina or Zach will probably reach out sometime soon to ask how we can help. But thank you very much. Very well done. Congratulations. Excellent. Thanks very much. And thank you for being the one who sent us that congratulatory uh, email last summer. It made our day. <laughs> maybe some days we're thinking maybe it didn't make our day, but it did make our day at that time. Thanks everyone for coming and participating in this OTF recognition event. Thank you. Thank Christy, you. can we just do a screenshot quickly just to capture yes. one if that's okay? If, the... if everybody uh, does not want their picture taken, then please uh, exit. Yeah. But otherwise, so we, we are going to know how to actually do that, Maruna. <laughs> yeah, I think we'll just, uh, yeah, okay. Annalise will do it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs>
Okay, smile. Yeah, okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank Thanks, you. everybody. Enjoy Bye. the rest of your day. Yeah. Don't forget it. It's TGIF Friday. TGIF. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Bye.